Okay, welcome again. My name is Amelia Pease. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the data manager at MOBA. I'm just going to go over some logistics before we get started. Since this is Zoom, we can hear you, and if you're off mute, and we can see you if your camera's on. So if you feel free to keep that in mind as we go through the presentation um, and record the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand to come off mute or realize your questions. Um, we have some FAQs planned for the end of the session, but we encourage you to ask questions out as they come to you. Uh, we'll also have time at the end for uh, open questions. We'll be recording the session and posting it on our website. So the recording should be available uh, by the end of the week. So at this point, I'm going to introduce myself and MOVA staff who are here will introduce themselves. Um, so I'll be taking you through the data overview and then showing you how to extract your data from eGrants and make a PS. I'll pass it over to Amanda to introduce herself and then uh, Hannah. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Miller. I'm the digital media coordinator here at MOVA and I will be taking on a portion of this training to go over harnessing your data for social media. Hi everybody, um, my name is Hannah Alzheim Hanchet. I will be kind of in the background answering some questions in the chat. So if you have any, just put them there. Um, and I'm the data coordinator. So today we are going to talk about data uses and some basics about data. Uh, we're going to learn how to extract our data from eGrants. We're going to make some charts and graphs with the OMT data. We encourage you to follow along with your own data during that part. And then Amanda's going to talk about using your data for social media. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what is data used for? So there are many benefits uh, to sharing data externally and internally at your organization. It can increase transparency trust, so you can really demonstrate your commitment to transparency and accountability, which can build trust with your donors, stakeholders, and your community. It allows for enhanced collaboration opportunities because sharing data allows agencies to collaborate more effectively with other organizations, government agencies, and partners. Um, you can foster a culture of sharing knowledge and resources, which can lead to stronger partnerships and more impact impactive initiatives at your agency. Um, you can have improved decision making. So access to shared data can provide insights that help organizations make informed decisions, uh, identify trends, better understand the needs of their target populations. Uh, this leads to more effective program development and resource allocation. You can use it for increased funding opportunities. So funders often look for evidence-based results and impacts with sharing your data. Uh, you can showcase your effectiveness, your successes, and that can help when you're applying for funding sources. It can enhance your advocacy efforts. So data can be a powerful tool for advocacy. I know we do that a lot at MOBA. Um, so you can provide concrete evidence to support your cause, influence policy, and raise awareness about issues. So these are just some of the ways that data sharing can help your mission, and you can utilize uh, some of the graphs that we make today to put these into action. So then we're going to talk about uh, where can you get data. So there are a number of data sources available to you. Uh, we're going to talk about some of them today. So the first one is your OMT. Luckily, all, everybody here has access to their OMT data from eGrants. So that will be your outcome data for the past two years. You should have your older records as well that you're keeping in an Excel file. Um, but on eGrants, you will have um, at least two years worth of data on there. You can also look at for some internal program data. So you can ask around at your agency to find other data sources that are being collected that you might not be aware of. Um, anything that records client demographics, services, outcomes, impact metrics, those all can be useful. Uh, surveys and feedback forms. I know many of you already have surveys implemented, um, but those can be a valuable tool to collect data. You can demonstrate program effectiveness and satisfaction metrics. You can survey clients, but you also can survey your staff, volunteers, or other stakeholders. There's also government databases, so publicly available data from government agencies, such as the Census, the Department of Health, um, or more local um, agencies. So you can use those to measure data against your own data. Um, many of you working in the field probably already know about these, but I have linked a few sources here. The National Crime Victimization Survey is an anonymous survey. It's not connected to the police, so it aims to collect data about victimizations that have been reported to the police and not reported to the police. Um, the Uniform Crime Report, that is a law enforcement uh, database, 
and it's viewable by state. Uh, but earlier this year, they launched a new database that has more victim focused metrics. So I recommend that this screenshot is from there. Um, you can sort it by your state and then you can look at um, some different victim data elements like this is asking, were they injured in their crime? Um, and lastly, census data linked here as well. So you can use that to compare and analyze some demographics. You can also look for some academic studies and research. So universities and research institutes often publish their studies and reports, and those can contain useful data. Partner organizations, we just talked about sharing data. So sharing among um, nonprofits, community groups, coalitions, that can kind of provide insight into what other services are being provided in your area. And lastly, social media and web analytics. So looking at data from your social media or your website, uh, you can see how much public engagement you have or how the awareness levels or effectiveness of some of your online campaigns. So how do I visualize my data? Now we're going to talk about some visualization strategies for sharing your data. You don't just want to dump an Excel file onto your website. You want to share data in a way that people can consume easily and understand. They can look at it quickly and get the point or the story that you're trying to tell. So generally, when we talk about data, we have five main goals that can help us determine what kind of visualization we want to use. So you're either trying to compare, composition, trend, relationship, or show geographic distribution. And these are kind of some of the chart types, uh, charts and graphs that we usually use. There's a tons of options, um, but these are some of the most common ones that you'll see. So first, comparison. So are you comparing quantities across different categories? If you already want to use a bar graph or a column chart, um, this here is the column chart. And this is uh, the subrecipient data, all of your data from FY23. So this is showing the uh, victims that were served in different counties. If you're looking at composition, so are you showing parts of a whole or distribution within a single category? Then we want to use a pie chart or a stacked bar chart. Stacked bar charts are my favorite. I'll show you an example. We'll make one of those later. Um, but pie charts can be good for if you're looking at the uh, percentage. We want to look at the percentage of victims that were served that were male, female, or the ages. This is a good way to show it. And we have a standard pie chart, and also they call this the donut chart. I like this one too. So if you're looking at a trend, are you making changes over time or trends? You can use a line graph or an area chart for these specific data points, which you all have in your um, data as well. I really like to use the area chart because we know that the new victims is counted within the total victims. So I like to use this to look at, um, the, to show that it's a portion of this bigger picture. So this is looking at over time. If you're looking at a relationship um, between two variables, you want to use a, scat a scatter plot or a bubble chart. Um, this is a scatter plot. This is harder for us to do because we all have the aggregated data from you all. Um, if you have data that you could match up, you know, this person was a female um, and they were this age and they were this victimization, it would be easier for you to make some of these. Uh, the example that I made here has the, uh, the individual served identifying as immigrant, refugee, or asylum seeker, and then the number of instances of immigration assistance that were provided. And I had to sort it by county because we don't have any aggregate data. But here you can see um, Suffolk County and Middlesex County, they have a higher level of uh, individuals they're serving that are immigrant refugee and asylum seekers, but they're not doing as many uh, immigration uh, assistance services, whereas Bristol County has a higher level um, of immigration services, but less um, victims that are immigrant refugee asylum seekers. So this is a way that you can look at the relationship between uh, two of your data points. And lastly, for a geographic distribution, um, a map chart is the best way to display that. Here we have a map chart showing the individuals that were served um, and the darker the area, the more that we're served there. So now we're going to go into the workshop. So we encourage you to follow along with your own OMT data during this part. Um, make sure you have access to Excel or Google Sheets. Um, Apple numbers will also work, but the instructions are not going to be uh, are not going to line up. So if you want to log into your eGrants account, I will go into my eGrants account, and we I'll show you how you can extract your data. Okay, so you should be able to see my uh, my eGrants page here. So you're going to go to, on your main page, you're gonna to go to this reports tab, and then where it says data, you're gonna have two options. You're gonna have your uh, safe plan OMT data, data or your VSS. If you go to the safe plan grant, um, there won't be anything in there. I'm gonna use that VSS. 
it's going to bring you to this page. I'm going to put in just uh, 2024 because we want to look at just that for right now. It will show your 2023 data as well if you don't put anything in here. So I'm going to sort of write for. You also can sort it by reporting period if you just wanted to see a specific period. You can do um, the document status if you wanted to look at just years that have been approved. I'm going to put in everything. The most important part is you want to look at this data to be displayed. If you don't select anything here, it's going to give you a huge printout with everything in it, all your goals and key outcomes. Um, so I'm going to select just the demographics and services. So that will include the demographics, the victimizations, and the direct services. Um, you can look at each one of these individually if you would like. I'm just going to do all demographics and services for now. You're going to click search, and it's going to generate the report for you. Once it's generated the report, you want to click on export to Excel. I already have it exported, but once you click this, it will export to an Excel file. So now that we've exported it, it's going to look like this. Um, we first have to do some cleaning to the data. Um, we're just going to make it more usable for us. So the first thing that I like to do this sum row, I'm just going to move this down a little bit because we don't want it quite yet. So I'm just going to move this down a row. You can cut it um, or you can just drag it like this. I'm just going to drag it down. I also like to sometimes highlight it so that I know um, that that's my total row. I'm just going to highlight it in gray so that we know what we're looking at it, that that's our total row. Um, the next thing you might see is some of the data will have this green, zoom in a little bit, We'll have this green um, message here. That is because it's storing it as text instead of a number. Um, we are just going to, to fix that. I'm just going to go to my first zero that I see. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to highlight everything in here just to make it easier. I like the whole thing. This might make you a little dizzy. And as we get to the end, I'm just going to click this. Uh, orange triangle right here and click convert to number. So once I do that, it's going to make all those zeros be numbers. So now our data should be ready to go um, to use. If you're not getting that triangle, if you right click on it and then left click again, it should come up. All right, go back to the beginning. So now here we have our uh, period data one, two, three, four. So we're going to start making some. Um, graphs with this data. The first one that we're going to look at is going to be just the number of people that were served over the four periods. So I'm going to highlight the uh, headers like this, and then I'm going to highlight the data that's in here. If you don't have any anonymous, um, you can hold down control, but the control button and highlight this again, and it will get rid of it. So if you don't have any anonymous, you don't need to include that in your uh, report. I'm going to put it into mine. So now that we have that highlighted, I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to click recommended charts. This is the best way. Um, if you don't, if you're new and you don't know what kind of chart you want, we just talked a little bit about what kind of charts you might want to use. But if you're new to doing this, recommended charts is a great tool. Um, it will show you what Excel thinks is the best me method to use. They're not always um, good. You know, I know that like for a, star a stacked column chart wouldn't work for this data because we know that the number of individuals. Um, and the new individuals are included in that. So we don't want to use um, a stack column, but we're just going to use this first one, the clustered column. If you don't see an option that you like here, you can always click all charts. I like this because it gives you a little preview of what it's going to look like before you even make it. So I can see, you know, pie chart for this wouldn't exactly work. Um, the area, so you can click and you can see which ones, uh, what it might look like. I'm just going to do the standard column. Now, I like to put them onto a separate sheet to make it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to click this. And I'm going to make, I'm going to call this charts. So I can put all of my charts onto my charts page. I'm going to cut that and paste it here. Now we can work with it. So here we have the uh, number of individuals, the number of anonymous, and the number of new individuals over our four periods. There's a lot of customization you can do with this. Um, if you click on your chart, you can go to this chart design at the top. And there'll be some pre-made designs for you. So if you like the look of one of these, you can just put this on and you don't have to do any extra work. Um, so those are really useful. Uh, this one's kind of overlapping. 
the 3D ones. There's lots of different designs you can pick from. You also can quickly change the colors if you don't like the colors here. Um, I usually do this, this one because it's kind of low of the colors. So I'll put that on. But you can change the colors easily that way. We're also going to want to change our chart title. So I'm going to double click this and I'm going to call this individual start in FY24. So that's kind of an easy way to do it. If you want to put on, I really like data labels. I think that's really helpful. So I'm going to put on data labels. If you click this plus sign on the side here, we have um, different options that you can put on. So you can put X title on the side here. If we wanted to put in, I'll put this in here and I'm going to put total visuals. And on the bottom, I'm going to write quarter so we know what we're looking at here. I'm also going to put on the data label. I like the data labels. Um, that shows you exactly how many numbers you have for each of your uh, categories. And you can customize it even further. If you go to data labels, you can pick the location. If you check it off, Excel is going to automatically put it where they think is the best. Um, but you can always change it if you want it on the inside. If you want it on the center, you can change it, make it look however you'd like. But there's tons of options here. I encourage you to play around with them. Um, the different elements that you can add. You can add a table if you want to display it that way. Um, you can add trend lines. Um, if you want to do more statistics-based things. <laughs> There's lots of different options there. You also can, if you want to change these colors, if you don't like them, just click, I want to double click on this and this options will come up. Again, there's so many options here. Everything here is customizable. Um, you can change the colors to be anything you want specifically. Um, well, if we click all of them, we'll change all of them. Um, so there's tons of options there that you can play around with. But this is kind of just a basic um, column chart, probably the most common um, type of graph that you'll see. Okay, so the second one that we're gonna make is going to be a stacked uh, bar or column chart. You can do it whichever direction you would like. And I'm going to do it on our genders. Let's go down to our gender data here. So I'm going to highlight um, all of our gender categories, male, female, transgender male, transgender female, our gender queer, other um, not reported. I don't have any not tracked, so I'm not going to highlight that. But if you have that, you can highlight that as well. I'm going to highlight all of these. I'm going to go back to insert. I'll do recommended, see what they say. But I know I'm going to be doing a stacked. I'm going to do a 100% stacked chart. So I'm going to do a bar. So I'm going to do an 100% stacked, which is going to be this third option in. And I'm going to do a bar, but you also could do a column if you prefer. Put it here so we can work with it. So I really like uh, the way that this displays data, especially when we're looking at our four quarters. Um, so here we can see that our quarters, it's series one, that's going to be quarter one. I'll show you how to rename this in a second. But here we can see in quarter one, we can see what percentage of um, the victims were male. Uh, in series two, we had the largest number, series three and series four. So these are the, the quarters. So I'm going to, just to rename these, I'm going to go to chart design. I'm going to go to select data. And then here, if you click edit, we can change this. So I'm going to change this to quarter one. Change this to quarter two. So now we have here our uh, our data for each one. These are also in the um, reverse order. Sometimes it does this. If you click on this, double click it, uh, it should come up this option here that says categories in reverse order. I'm going to check that so that we have it in the order that it is on our report. I'm also going to add our data labels again. I like the data labels. I think they're really useful, so I'm going to add those. So now here, looking at this, we can see what percentage of our individuals served for each gender, and we can look at it over all four quarters. Um, I like the 100% stacked because we have a, a improportionate amount of female victims that were served. So if we did a regular stacked, I can show you what that would look like. Um, if we did it stacked this way, it would we wouldn't see anything for the other genders. 
So if you have a disproportionate amount of um, of individuals or of data points like that, the 100% I think is really useful. And again, if you don't like the one that you chose, you can always go to change chart type up here and uh, it'll give you all of these options again. I can't get it to, I can't get it back to how we had it. There we go. Um, no. Chart title. Let's change that as well. Cards and small individuals. Um, so the last one that we're going to make is going to be a pie chart. I'm going to go back to the data. And for this one, I'm going to use our sum row. So that's why I like to highlight this so we can tell um, which one it is. A pie chart won't work if you're doing all four quarters. Like if I had highlighted the genders like this, it wouldn't have worked because it was only going to show one um, row because it's the percentage of a total. So I'm going to go down to our special classifications for this one. I think it's gonna start, yes, in uh, BY, that's the column up here, following along here. So I'm gonna do for just the totals for the whole year. So I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna highlight our titles up here. Let's see, other. And then I wanna highlight the bottom row. So again, I'm gonna hold down the control button so I can highlight our row here. And then I'm going to go back to insert. I'm going to click recommend it again. And it's telling me you, you can display these in a few different ways, but I'm going to pick the uh, pie chart. Here's our pie chart. Um, these names are kind of long. I'm just going to go back and um, change them on our sheet here. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, they have these labels on them that are making them pretty long. So I'm just going to delete these so that it looks cleaner on our chart. And it's going to do this in real time. So if we update it here, it'll just update it on our chart. Okay. We go back to our chart. Now we have them all down here. That looks a little bit cleaner. Um, now I like to put the uh, names next to the slice. So to do that, I'm just gonna go again to our data labels. Um, so it, it didn't put the name next to it, it just put the numbers. To get the name, I'm gonna click this uh, button on the side here and click more options. When you do that, you're gonna get this whole uh, this whole menu. And so I'm gonna click, oh, let's go back to it. What I'm going to do, um, Percentage, I want to see the percentage. I don't care as much of the value. Um, here, I'm going to look at what percentage um, of the total. So I'm going to put percentage. I'm going to unclick value. I don't want that one. Um, and I'm going to put in category name. So now I have the category names on our actual chart, which I like to look up more. Um, I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to hide our legend because we don't need that now that we've had it on the chart. Now, I want my... This looks still a little bit messy. So I'm going to click on the slices. If you double click on one of the slices, you'll get this option it's called angle of first slice. I use this all the time to kind of mess around with it and make it look how you like it. So I'm going to pull it a little bit and it will change the direction. So this is a little bit better. We have more space now um, in the areas where our data callouts are. I'm also gonna pull this one out because it's too dark. So if you pull it out, you'll get this little line showing you um, where it's connecting to, which I also think is useful. So you can rearrange any of these. If you don't like how close they are, you can rearrange any of these, and that will do your little uh, a little line showing you where it goes to. I'm also going to change the colors to make it match your other ones. I change the color on this one. Now, I'm going to call this. Okay, and now we have our three charts here to start off on. 
Um, and we can use these for sharing on social media, sharing on your website, putting them into reports um, that you're writing for uh, stakeholders. So lots of things we can do with our charts. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later. If you have any specific charts you would like made, we can definitely help you with that. So in the PowerPoint, which we're going to be sharing, uh, we have the instructions for what we just did. So if you were following along, you can go back and uh, we have all of the instructions here for you. I'm just going to play through because we just did all of this. All right. And then I'm going to pass it over to Amanda to talk about social media. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here. So we're going to go through several slides, um, not too in the weeds, about how to harness your data for social media and the various platforms and ways that you can do so. Uh, you can switch to the next slide. So there are the main platforms like Facebook, Twitter, also known as X, Instagram, um, as for social media where you can share your data on. Constant Contact or another email distributor platform is a really great way to share data as well if you're an agency that shares monthly newsletters or is often engaging in various awareness campaigns. Using your data on your email distributor platform is really great as well um, if folks don't have social media or aren't engaging with you on social media. It's just another avenue to connect, uh, connect with your audience. Next slide, please. So recognizing your audience. As victim service agencies, our audience often consists of survivors, providers, allied professionals. So really navigating and posting your data to align with that is really important. And using plain language is really crucial as well. Oftentimes folks who aren't directly involved in the victim service field as providers may not understand what OMT stands for. So using plain language such as data collected uh, can be really helpful if you keep your audience engaged. I'm seeing that my audio is fading in and out. Zoom doesn't love my computer for some reason, so I'll try to speak a little closer to my audio. Um, hopefully that sounds better. So I was just saying using plain language can be really helpful in keeping the attention of your audience. Um, minimizing text and graphics is really important as well. We don't want paragraphs and paragraphs of text in our graphics. It can really lose your message and your content when you're sharing data. So if there's an option to use your captions for your like content, that is really important. And if there is a way you can like share more information, say on another website, you can have folks uh, be linked to your bio or follow a direct link to your caption as well. Uh, definitely wanting to engage with your audience um, in a really intentional way is really important. And then focusing on awareness campaigns is a really great way to not only engage with your audience intentionally, but also in the awareness campaign as well. Like for example, if you're a domestic violence agency that has data around safety planning, housing, um, 2019As, um, 209As, excuse me. Um, that can be really helpful in using Domestic Violence Awareness Month to engage with both, um, both categories. And similarly with Domestic Violence, so Sexual Violence Awareness Month and Survivors of Homicide Victims Awareness Month. Next slide, please. How's my audio? Is it okay right now? It's better, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, everyone. Hopefully, hopefully it stays better. <laughs> um, and then in creating survivor-centric graphics, it's really, really crucial to stay trauma-informed. Adding content warnings to your graphics is a really helpful way to empower the audience and the reader um, when they're engaging with your content. For example, if you're sharing data around domestic violence, adding a content warning that says content warning mentions of domestic violence. This not only informs the reader before they continue to engage with that content, but it also gives them the choice of whether or not they want to engage with it. Um, so we really want to stay empowered and provide 
provide choice for folks who are engaging with our content. And then around data, um, how will a survivor process the data? Do you have a bunch of numbers and a bunch of charts on one page? That might be a little overwhelming for anyone to read, and it might be overwhelming for a survivor to read all of that heavy content on one page. So breaking out your data by like one graphic each can be really helpful in creating a space between each graphic. And again, digestible information. This is parallel to having your language be plain um, and approachable for the survivor. Um, and then lastly, resources. At Mobile, we always try to have our final graphic. I I'm imagining Instagram where you can have like the carousel and your slide thing and you can see all the graphics. Our last graphic is always one to four resources for folks to engage with. So what resources does your agency provide that connects to the data that you're sharing? What agencies do you partner with that could connect to the data? And can you include any culturally responsive resources for survivors as well? So it's really important to keep survivors in the forefront always when creating and sharing content. Next slide, please. So creating a graphics. My two favorite platforms when creating and sharing content is Canva and Hootsuite. Canva is a really great user-friendly software. Um, it's mostly free um, and on Canva, I like to think of it as like the, the friendly intuitive version of Photoshop. There are a lot of resources on Canva to help you learn how to create graphics. There are a lot of templates on there to use um, if your agency may not be using Canva already. And there are graphs on there as well that you can input your numbers. Say, for example, you want to change the like aesthetic of the graphic you've made on Excel. You can input those numbers into a graph on Canva too and use that graph. Um, so it's a really user-friendly, intuitive way to create content. And Hootsuite is helpful in scheduling posts. It's not necessary. I really like to use it because I can create my post very timely um, and I can plan it out like a week ahead. And it's also really great in collecting engagement analytics. Say, for example, you're posting data for Domestic Violence Awareness Month throughout the month. You can schedule those posts on Hootsuite and then collect that data at the end of the month from that time frame, and it downloads it into a PDF, PDF format. And you can see how the audience engaged with your data, with your content, and then that can better inform how you approach sharing content and data in the future. I don't want to get too in the weeds with these two things because it can be its own training, um, but these are just two very helpful and very user-friendly platforms to use. Next slide, please. So we're going to go through a couple examples of graphics that MOVA has made um, around data. So this first example, it's not the whole graphic. Um, once you get these slides, you'll be able to um, click the link below and see the full, the full post, or you can just follow our Instagram and view it on there. But this was our annual safe plan report from FY22. Um, so we shared data from that safe plan report across social media, and you'll see we have a title that shares what the, the data is and where it's from. There are several graphics that highlighted numbers that were really, really crucial, and you'll see that the number is like the most prominent piece of this graphic. It stands out the most. So really thinking about like having your content and your data stand out. And then our last slide was our Ask MOVA resource. And this was shared again during Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we included the content warning um, in the graph, in the caption as well. Next slide. And then this was a example of data that we shared during this past Pride Month in June. So we shared a more wider range of statistics and data around victimization in the LGBTQIA plus community. So here you'll see the content warning being a bit more general. 
So victimization statistics in the LGBTQIA plus community was the content warning. And then we went through again with several graphics sharing really important, crucial data. Um, and this middle graph, you'll see that the data that we shared centered around the sexual and domestic violence within the LGBTQ plus community. And it followed at the end of the post with resources centering around LGBTQIA plus survivors. Next slide. So we don't always have to use our data for social media either. As I mentioned earlier, you can use your data and harness your data for an email distributor platform if your agency has that. So this is an example of a one pager that we created that was around Sexual Assault Awareness Month and Child Abuse Prevention Month. And we included this one pager in our newsletters. This is also a really great way to create data I mean, to create graphics with your data to print and share at a tabling event, at an engagement opportunity. Um, there's not just like one way to share and amplify your data. You can do it across like many different platforms in many different areas. Um, you can share this with stakeholders, with other allied professionals. Um, I wouldn't recommend sharing a one pager on social media just because the format can get a little a little funky. Um, really sticking to those like square, those square um, Instagram friendly um, formats is really helpful. Next slide. And I know we'll have time at the end to answer questions. Um, and I just want to summarize like three important factors when creating content to share your data. Data and numbers really speak volumes when you're posting on social media. For me, I love to see like numbers that correlate with a very important issue or an agency that I'm aligned with. It helps me understand a topic and understand an issue and also understand the agency. So it's really helpful to engage with your audience in that way. It almost feels like they're a part of the conversation with you. Um, so three points just to take away from this conversation is using user-friendly platforms like Canva and Hootsuite to create and schedule posts um, and your with your content. And two, consider using your data to amplify awareness campaigns. And three, always consider your audience and always remain survivor-centered when creating and sharing your content. I think number three like, should be the biggest takeaway in everything that we do, of course, always remaining survivor-centered and trauma-informed. All right, we have some uh, pre-written FAQs um, and then I will stop the recording and anybody that can ask questions um, that they might have. So what roles have access to the OMT data and e-grant? So it'll be all the same people that are able to submit the OMT and start the OMT. So these are the roles um, that have access to that report, that report tab. Um, and you should have access to the BSS. If you have a safe plan program, you will have access to the safe plan as well. Um, are any of the content making platforms free? So Canva has a free option, but it limits some of the features unless you subscribe to the Pro. Um, Hootsuite is uh, only accessible if you pay for the subscription. Um, we do like on Canva, the free version, you can make graphs. So how we were just making graphs on Excel, you can plug that data into Canva and it's a little bit more user-friendly. Um, it'll make it a, a little bit more Instagrammable for you. Um, so that definitely check that out, um, the free version of Canva we promote. <laughs> Um, can I combine my OMT data with other data we collect? Uh, yes, once it's exported to the Excel, you can combine your data with other data sources or your data that you have from past years that you've been storing in Excel. Um, if you have questions on how to do this, if you try it and you're struggling, um, we'd be happy to help you with that at a TA session. And what should I do if I need more help on my data? Um, we're going to be offering personalized TA sessions to help you uh, recreate any charts that we made here today or create new charts that you might have an idea for. Maybe this jogs an idea um, and you have a chart you want to make for your social media or for your website. So if you have any ideas um, and you just want some help and some guidance on that, you can sign up for a TA session 
Um, I know I'll put a link in the chat so that you can access that, but you'll also be able to access it on the slides. You also can email us at movastats, that's the data team's email, so you can email us uh, with any questions you have. All right, so I'm going to stop the recording um, and anybody who has questions can ask those.